Hey, Snoogs. Yo. Guess what happened this week for the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast? Mm, you finally got that tick looked at. Tick? On yeah. the podcast? What tick? The one that was strapped to your ass. Oh. Well, how did that happen to the podcast? I don't well, put the microphone there. Getting, getting a bit itchy last week and jumping around. You know, what? Now you get to sit down, relax. What? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? No, it's nothing like that. No ticks, no arseholes, nothing. Okay, well, I suppose one arsehole uh, <laughs> and me. Uh, no, the 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 statistics spiked. We had a shit ton of people listening to the podcast. Do you awesome. know why? Because I'm on it now. They finally got the memo. <laughs> no, my friend. A little no? bit. A oh. little bit because of that. A little bit because of that. We can only hope. What was it for, mate? What happened? What's, what's I, the GA? I, I made an application to get the show put on Spotify, and it was finally approved. Awesome. The podcast, this podcast, is now available on Spotify. So if there's anybody that is maybe going out of their way to listen to it, maybe on the Podbean uh, app or, or through iTunes, and you'd prefer to listen to it on Spotify, you can. Spotify is available on everything, man. Yeah. And now the Aussie Games Express video game podcast is available on Spotify, which is, yeah, super duper boosted the viewer viewer numbers, which is really that's, cool. That's fantastic to hear. Super happy about that. But anyway, mm. we've got some, a lot of stuff to get through in this week's podcast. I've got some exciting things to talk about. So I think we better start the show. Press start. This is episode 194, and today is Friday, the 10th of November 2017. Welcome to the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast. I am your host, Lucas, and here with me is my co host and very good friend, Schnoogs. How are you, mate? I am fantastic, mates, and uh, in honour of it being a Friday. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Have you been hanging out to start the show to crack that open? Maybe. <laughs> Where was my warning? I would have got myself a drink. Uh, anyway, I'm sitting here with nothing. Oh, it's uh, it's been a full on week, mate. So that's gonna um, it's gonna what go was, well. What was that? That was a four X, was it? No, no, I, I can spell beer. <laughs> BB. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know what you're drinking. It's either CC and dry, or um, a I don't know, some sort of rum and coke, Bundy and coke, or something. Yeah, it's actually a. Um, I've I've gone a bit poor. I have a uh, had a 600 ml bottle of coke here, and I've put some Jack Daniels in it. Oh, gotcha. So that was the can of coke. Hmm. Okay. Well, there so, you go. This, yes. This week's beautiful. This, this week's episode of the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast proudly brought to you by Coca-Cola Amatil. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> if only. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Well, anyway, before we start the show, here is this week's... Well, I've said that wrong. I'm supposed to say before we start, here is this week's show in preview. Get it right, Lucas. First up, we'll do video game discussion. Then we'll do video game news. And in this week's news, Snoogs is going to tell us all about how Sony moves up production. EA respawns $455 million, go Harry, go, and Xbox gets buggy. Then we'll do user-created content, what's that sound, and last words. So, let's go straight into video game discussion. Want me to go first this week? It's it's your turn to go first this week, mate. You've got the uh, the big, big news. Okay, we do. All right, well, look, first up, we'll start off with one that we're both going to contribute to because I don't believe it was on last week's uh, podcast, but you and I went to wherever that was. You can tell us where it was in Sydney, but the Xbox One X Stay and Play. <laughs> I heard your uh, your location location guidance yeah, uh, with I'm, the Duck Boys. I, uh, oh, yeah, it was on Xbox the bridge. No, no, it was not near the bridge. Well, we went, we went over, over the, the bridge, bridge to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to yes, what your last, daughter said. Last, uh, so, yeah. God, she's a special one. So what? Yeah. So last uh, was it Saturday? Yeah, yeah it was a bit of yeah, a, a bit of a dreary bit of a dreary day. So we thought uh, we'll grab 
our um, our little ones and went for a drive into the city into Karama Park in Piemont. Which Piemont. Is... I got there in the end because I, I looked mm-hmm. up your looked post up. on our website. website. In, indeed. And it's uh, around the back behind the, uh, pretty much behind the casino. That's is it fair for me to say out. in the middle of nowhere? Is that in the middle of nowhere? No, that's pretty much the heart of the city. Hard, right, okay. Well, that's how much I know yeah. about Sydney. Yeah, I've been so. there. I think I reckon now, with the amount of times I've been there, I think ninety eight point three five percent of those occasions were with you. Probably <laughs> four Aussie Gamers Express. I don't know. Well, coming to meet up with me or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so we went in into wherever that is and uh, had a look at the Xbox Stay and Play, and uh, unfortunately, and the, it's nothing that Xbox or Microsoft could have done about it, but it was pretty shitty with the weather. It was raining. Yeah, it was but, a bit um, of a miserable day, wasn't it? Yeah, but look, basically to explain what it was, if anybody was wondering, it's like a just a cube demountable where it had sort mm. of like a foyer area as, as the, at the entrance with an all glass front. And uh, you could go in there and they had... Uh, how many do they have? One, two, four, five, four. six? Oh, TVs in the foyer? Yeah. Yes. Was it eight, six or eight? Nine. I don't know. Six, six to eight. Six or seven, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, TVs running uh, either Xbox One X consoles or the um, uh, the dev kits. They had a couple of dev kits there, but they also had the, the final consoles there as well. And uh, they had games set up there, typical <coughs> of what I played previously in the Microsoft store. So they had Super Lucky's Tale. They had Forza 7, Killer Instinct. There was uh, FIFA 18 and uh, two, NBA 2K18. And Cuphead, I think that is. Did I get Instinct. everything? Yeah, I said Killer, Killer Instinct. Instinct. Did you say that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that. that'll be all of them. Yeah. I think that was all of them. But yeah, so yeah. they they had all those games set up. You could just walk in, play them, leave, do whatever. They had a couple of uh, special edition Xbox Xbox One S's set up, and it was basically just a bit of a PR thing where you could go in, you could talk to the guys, get some information. There was a lady there asking, uh, "What's the difference between the Xbox One?" and the Xbox One X, and I don't know if you were standing there and listening, Snoogs, but I'm pretty sure yeah, the sure guy not. said that there are different models and with different sized hard drives. Did you hear that? I, I heard that, but I didn't hear what the question was. I just heard the answer. Well, the, 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 the lady went further and said, oh, is it, has like one got more storage? And, and he said... Well, the Xbox One X, there's ver- there's a very there's a couple of different models, and yeah, some have more storage than others. And I'm thinking, I thought it was just the one with a terabyte. I didn't realise there was more than one. Yeah, that yeah, I heard him. I heard him say that bit where there's yeah other ones, and I'm like, really? I didn't know there was a two terabyte. No, I, I don't think there is. So I look. Unless I don't know. If, had a two, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm pretty sure they were all the same. Six hundred and fifty dollars got you either the Scorpio or you got the standard one if they ran out. And the difference was it had Project Scorpio in green written on the console and the controller. That's it. But anyway, that was that was something I picked up. But you know, sometimes these things happen, you make mistakes. But uh and then upstairs at the, the stay and play, they had uh two rooms and at the back there was another two rooms that you were explaining as well where you could go there and play games overnight you could stay there overnight and it was first in best dressed and uh yeah that's that's pretty much it that was that was the extent of it there wasn't really any anything else going on there's anything i missed no that's pretty much it mate it was just um like you said a bit of a publicity thing yeah. The weather kind of would have put a bit of dampener on it, but um, mm. everyone everyone that was inside was having fun. I know our girls had an absolute ball. Yeah. Um, mine in particular was asked to play uh, that one with the cup a couple of times. Yeah. Good luck <laughs> and, to her. Uh, yeah, good luck. I don't want to make her rage just yet, but mm-hmm. she's, had, she's had a few more goes with Super Luckies and um, been really enjoying that. So it was it was actually good to see them get out and, and have a bit of a play with it all. And, mm. uh, yeah, it's just good to go and have a look at what they're doing. Yeah, so, look, I mean, look, I think it was a good idea. I don't... I Look, I'm, I'm very oh, uncultured when it comes to, you know, the city and what sort of people are around and 
you know, all that, like that sort of culture. I would think that it might have been a little bit more successful had they done something like that in Parramatta. Because, I don't know, I feel like it, it might be a little bit more accessible for people rather than it would directly have been, in the heart of the city. Yeah, it would have been um, better for foot traffic. Mm. But to be honest with you, if you'd gotten the chance to sit in the room and play all night in that particular spot, it would have been it would have been remarkable. You know, oh, it would look nice. Once, the scenery. Yeah, once once the once the sun goes down in the city and all the lights come on, and the way they've got the bridge lit up, and you, you could see um, uh, Luna Park, <clears throat> and and then you've also got the casino just around the corner with the lights bouncing off it. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it would that, have been that nice. would have been memorable. Um, but see, you can see the there bridge. Been a lot more people out if it wasn't raining. If it wasn't raining, you, you could see the bridge from where we, where we were standing, where where it was. Mm-hmm. So, hence my valid comment about it being near the bridge. It's visible. It's near it. Yep. <laughs> my draw works. distance. My draw distance can can uh, <laughs> render it. It's not too far away. All right. Uh, well, yeah, that was Xbox Day and Play. All right. Now, well, let's let's fast forward to. Um, the big big guns. So obviously this week's been a massive week for uh, this this company in particular. So I want to talk about Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Super Mario Odyssey is so good. I've played a lot more than I had last week now, and uh, mm-hmm. it just it's the gift that just keeps on giving. It's so much fun to play. I. I just, I really don't understand how they get such good graphic fidelity out of that tiny little console thing. It's great. I love it. Such a fun game. If you've got a Nintendo Switch, you can't not own Super Mario Odyssey. You know what, with with it being Mario, does the fidelity really matter? No, no, it doesn't. But it's it's absolutely brilliant. It helps. Yeah. Absolutely, and and it's the first time that I've ever seen in a Mario game semi-realistic environments, because like you know you go to New Donk City, and it feels like a, a living, breathing city, and there's like you know normal-looking people. They're not just all sort of like monsters and stuff around. There's people around. There's cars, buildings. Did you play it at the expo? I did. Yeah. Is that the the area they were showing off there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the cities, one of the the levels that you could have done at the at the expo. Yeah, New Donk City. Okay. Yeah, because that and, was um, I loved. There was two things that I had, that I was able to do while I was playing it, and one was reconnecting the power lines. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of cool. Watched him zoom across and, and connecting him back up again, and then mm. the other was getting musicians together. So you had to go and find the musicians yeah. wherever they were. Yeah, I did. Um, I've done that one now. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's like a bit of an Easter egg hunt. It's it's not ridiculously hard or anything like that, and uh, but it's it's good fun to play. Like, and then you 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 learn all the new mechanics that come along with it. What you can control by throwing your hat, your cap, or the mm-hmm. uh, the playable character of Cappy. Throw that onto different things, and you can control them. So you can control some of the enemies, and turn into them, and sort of you know become whatever it is. Great fun game. Uh, and I and I learned out I learned why it's called New Donk City. The uh, the mayor of New Donk City, her name is Pauline. Does that ring any bells for you? No. So I hear the word donk, and I think of an engine. <laughs> no. Do- well, Pauline was actually the name of the damsel in distress from the Donkey Kong game. Remember that? Oh. Yeah, that was Pauline, and you were essentially Jumpman before you became Mario. Oh, yeah. And mm. uh, yeah, at the, once you you sort of get to the end of uh, New Donk City, it becomes very a- apparent that the whole place is built around Donkey Kong, which is really cool. So you get some really a really cool sort of um, mix up of gameplay in that level. Loved are, it. Are, are we allowed to ask if he's there? Uh, I'm not going to answer. Okay. Yeah, that's that's something that if you if you do want it spoiled, go and check it out on YouTube. But uh, I won't spoil. It. It's 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 awesome. And uh, oh, mate, just there's so many different levels, and even the levels that I tried to avoid because sometimes you'll, when you're playing through 
Odyssey is there'll be a fork in the road and you can choose which which direction you want to go and there'll be like yep. the water world <laughs> and then it'll be like oh, <laughs> fuck the water world I'm going to the other one but you'll eventually have to do the water one anyway so and, I, and I've been there and even that one's a pleasure to play you know normally those water ones suck and normally the ice ones suck I don't like the yeah. ice ones because you yeah. always slip all over the place and they're really hard mm-hmm. but there's there's ways around the slipping around now by using Mario's special powers that he's uh, granted by using Cappy. So, nice. yeah. Just bring a T-Rex in and away you go. Yeah, the T-Rex is <laughs> gold. That's in the first <laughs> level they give you a T-Rex to control. That is so good. Good fun. But anyway, that's Super Mario Odyssey. I've played that a bit more on the, on the Nintendo Switch and uh, absolutely loving it. I've got so many cool things to play. I've got a bit of a backlog. All right, now I was a bit cheeky before with the way I introduced Super Mario Odyssey. So now let's talk about the biggest thing that's happened. Well, I guess for this year in the gaming industry, in the the console uh, world, and that is the release of the most powerful console in the world, the Xbox One X. So that was released on Tuesday, just gone, the 7th of November, and I was lucky enough to go and pick up my Xbox One X, and um, and I went down for the midnight release. Oh, how did that go for you? Tell us about that. <sighs> well, I listened. Like I said, I listened to your uh, special guest podcast with the uh, the Doug Boys. Yeah, and on there you said that um, you know you go down to one of the official midnight releases. There's prizes. You get a shirt and whatever, and you know. The the way that the um, the email or text message that you got made it sound like it'd be a bit of a party atmosphere. Yeah, and I thought you know flashes of um, Fallout Four come back, which uh, was okay. absolutely phenomenal night. So I've gone down there, walked up the stairs, and looked left, looked right, turned around, walked into the store. And uh, one of the people working up working there has come over and gone, oh, hi, can you help me? Can I, can I help you? And I've gone, where the bloody hell's the party? <laughs> and she's gone, yeah, that, uh, that didn't happen. I'm like, oh, okay. So anyway, so um, the, the person who I was speaking to actually ended up being really, really nice person to meet. Uh, I think her name was Liz or Liv. Something she had coloured hair. She had coloured hair. She did have coloured hair. Yes. Yeah, she was. I saw. I met her at the launch for the uh, Super Mario Odyssey. She was very vibrant and very nice. Mm, yeah. So um, she ended up just sort of hanging out and and chatting with me. She's a cosplayer. Oh and, yeah. And uh, yeah, so we're talking about that. Talking about the expo. Talking about packs. Uh, talking about everything that was going on. Um, didn't really talk much about the, the launch of the One X, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And the people that were there were just, you know, as as much as I hate to say it, I kind of have to because it's it's not derogatory, it's descriptive. <laughs> but if you picture the thought of what a video game nerd is, <laughs> that's who was there. <laughs> it and, was smelly, wasn't it? <clears throat> no, I didn't get close enough. <laughs> I heeded your warning, yeah. and and to be honest with you, mate, there wasn't enough there to raise a smell. There was okay. dead set like six to eight people hanging around. Yeah. Well, that um, that, um, th- yeah, that... It, was a, it was a bit of a letdown, actually. It was um, yeah, but that that was around. never going that was never going to be a party there because that, that that party one was only in mm. two locations. Would have been Broadway, wouldn't it? Uh, or possibly. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they were nowhere near us. Like, we, yeah, like, I don't even know if, I think one of them might have been Brisbane. I don't okay. know. There was, it, it, it wasn't, there wasn't uh, a big song and dance for it, which is a bit of a shame. They, sh- they, they should have done something like that. I think, though, when they did do them, when it was for like Fallout and Halo and all that sort of stuff, I think maybe mm-hmm. they were left out of pocket. So I don't think they're going to bother with it. Which is a shame. Well, yeah. Well, that, well, with with the Fallout one, there was I've actually I've got photos of it still. There was you know hundreds of people there, 
Yeah, but well, there's, you, there's, they there's, fed um, hundreds of people. They got yeah, that's true. Drinks. Yeah, you know, it would have been a big night for them. There's um a, a post you could probably uh, search on the Aussie Games Express website. You probably just do mm-hmm. a search for Fallout release or midnight release or something like that. There's a post on there with photos, which shows off yeah. that. I think the Halo one might be there as well. So, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, that that's a bit of a shame that it it, it wasn't a big song and dance. But uh, here's what it is. But uh, yeah, so uh, I was I was I had a very busy week this week, so I wasn't able to go to the midnight launch because I had a big day the next day. So uh, my wife graciously went in and uh, and picked it up for me. And uh, while she was there as well, she bought uh, Assassin's Creed Origins because they had a deal going that if you bought the Xbox One X on release, that uh, there was a couple of games you could choose from and buy them for fifty bucks. 50 bucks. Yeah. So uh, the, I think the options were Origins, there was... Uh, Forza, there was Wolfenstein. And uh, Shadow of War. Shadow of War, yeah. As well. So out of those ones, uh, whether I wanted them or already had them, Origins was the pick of the bunch. And they didn't have any leftover copies of Call of Duty, the standard edition. So I had to buy the deluxe edition, which I didn't want to pay for. So I opted for Origins, which uh, brings us uh, forward to uh, or very close to the next point that we're going to get into. But anyway, I set up the Xbox One X when uh, I was home later on that Tuesday when it released, uh, switched over uh, the, the external hard drive, copied everything across to the internal hard drive, which was a terabyte now, which I'd only had a, a 500 before on the S. But anyway, I switched it all over, installed. It took about three hours for Origins to install, and I got a chance to play it for a little bit before I had to retire to bed. And it was great. It felt good. It looked great. It was crisp, clear, beautiful. It was, it was nice, but I only spent a tiny bit of time with it. The following night was when we organised uh, for Rem to come round with Greggio, yourself. Unfortunately, you weren't able to make it because you were buggered, you poor poor little bloke. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that's all right. But uh, they, Rem came round, Greggio came round, uh, and, uh, and we sat around attempting to play the Xbox One X all night. The key word there, attempting. Mm. So what happened? A long silent pause. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. because it, <clears throat> Origins worked the previous night when I first installed it, <clears throat> but it kept playing up. Like I, I was playing um, Wolfenstein Two when Rem and Greg Greg got there, and I thought, okay, come in, guys, have a seat. You want a drink? Blah blah blah. I know Rem was really excited to check out Origins. So let's chuck Origins in and give you a go straight up. And it wouldn't start. It kept hanging. It kept crashing, saying the the, um, the game was taking too long to load. And uh, it, it just wasn't working. Took ages to get anywhere. And then I, we ended up giving up. We're like, all right, let's try some other games. And just about everything was crashing. Nothing was working. I'm like, what's going on? Mm. We tried all the remedies. If, you, if you're privy to the, the uh, sort of vlog video that I put up earlier in the week... Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about here, and I'll be repeating myself a little. But yeah, we tried uh, resetting it, crash like closing the program, rebooting it, unplugging the console, cycling the power without it plugged in to get rid of residual uh, energy, plugged it back in, done everything like that, and it still didn't work. Finally, we deleted the game, put the disc back in. Then we even hit we hit even more problems where it wouldn't install. It kept like failing Mm -hmm. and uh, installation stopped so you had to start it again and then it would fail and like i'm thinking my console is broken the xbox one x that i bought is a dud and uh we then the final thing we tried was when you put the disc in after deleting it it prompts you that there's an update and greg said i'll do update later so it'll just install the disc so i did that and the disk started installing really quickly. So it's an issue there with installing the update simultaneously with installing the disk, which I have heard was an issue a long time ago, but I've never encountered it. Mm. So anyway, long story short, we got it to install, got the update to install, then the game booted up, and everything's been working pretty sound since. 
But then you sent through a picture, which was quite interesting. Same thing happened to you. Yep. Yeah. On and you're on originally... a 1S. A 1. No, just on the original. The OG. The original one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so original, I was trying to uh, show a game which uh, Microsoft has, has let us have a look at, which is a, um, which is a Disney, I think it's called Rush or something yeah. where you get to play with Disney characters and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm doing a review with that uh, with Rem and going to do some gameplay of our little ones playing. Mm-hmm. Mm, excuse me. And, uh, yeah, wasn't able to wasn't able to boot up, just kept hanging. Um, so once that happened, I went, okay, let's try something else. And I tried Super Lucky's Tale. Again, hung. Uh, yep. Pretty much everything that was installed on the hard drive was hanging, even to the point where uh, the Division wouldn't boot up and that's on disk. Have you got the Division on there as well? Not the Division, Destiny. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Not... <laughs> I mean, although that's this is not good news, I, I was I was a little bit comforted by the fact that it was happening on yours as well, which sort of mm. took away from the fact that my Xbox One X was broken because that would have really ticked me off. But it's obviously a software thing, an update issue. Um, I think was it you that mentioned that it's a, it's it's likely. Oh no, you you tweeted it out, and one of your uh, yeah one of the your, one of the so- followers. Uh, yes, I had a suggestion and, uh, that um that, well they said the usual suggestion google it and blah 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 and do the cycle to uninstall reinstall that's that's one and a half terabytes of stuff to uninstall and reinstall so yeah really and do. and essentially i d- i did that and it didn't <laughs> yeah it. and um yeah the one of them pointed out the fact that i'm because i'm in the insider program that it might have been something with that yeah but you're not on the one well, that's the yes. thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I After that suggestion that it was an update from the Insider uh, program, I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to be using the Xbox One X a lot more now. I don't want trouble like this, so I'm going to opt out of the Insider mm. program. And then I, I booted it up and realized that it's something that you manually need to add to each console. It's not your settings aren't saved across console. So when I went in there, it, I, I wasn't enrolled in the in the um, Insider program on my One X, so it wasn't like a temp like a temperamental tester update that I thought I was hit with. It would have been just the public update. So this is going to be affecting quite a few people, I would imagine. Yeah, well, I haven't um, I haven't really had a chance to research it with anyone. Uh, like forums or anything like that, but um, yeah, I I did the the cycle on it last night with the power. I actually unplugged it before I went to work this morning, plugged it back in tonight, and same deal. But this mm-hmm. time, Netflix and Stan booted up, so I don't know whether there's different with with the games as opposed to apps because the app like Netflix wouldn't boot up uh, the other night. Mm. So yeah, I don't know. Well, look, I, mm. I um I played Origins today. I've tried the Evil Within today. Everything was working as normal for me. It seems to be back to normal. I didn't have any problems today whatsoever. Um, uh, further to that, a little bit off topic. Do you remember me saying how the Xbox One S and the Connect no longer worked? Mm-hmm. Like with the you know Xbox on and all that sort of stuff. It, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, you're saying that. Yeah, it, it now works again with the with the Xbox One X. <laughs> so I don't know if there was okay. a problem with the uh, S that I had, but uh, yeah, you walking still need past the, the USB adapter, or have you got? Yes, a... no, no, it, yes, okay. it, it's the same as the S with the connector. So you need the the uh, converter thing, uh, the adapter. But yeah, walking past my console, I was just just out of the blue. I went, oh, "I'll give it a try." Xbox on, and it went. Boop, boop, boop. I'm like, oh. Controller free controls, here I come. Back to Mr. Lazy World. It's great. <laughs> so that's that's another plus. But yeah, look, it was a really terrible initiation with the Xbox One X. And in hindsight, uh it's probably through no fault of the X itself. It's really just a Xbox issue. Um so 
but it's it's a shame that that occurred well, could, when I had. It you could know, have very well been an update that was getting pushed out. You know, we were what 18, 18 hours in front of the next release. Um, so you know. would have been, well, you would have been plugging it in before anyone else in like the US or anything. Like that. Oh right, yeah. So it it might have been something Microsoft pushed out at the last minute. Well, that's just that, going to be haywire, or but that was the Wednesday night that this occurred. Oh yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, not not on launch day. So I don't know. Look, but anyway, look. The main thing is, I'm very happy with the Xbox One X. Assassin's Creed Origins has grabbed me by the balls and said, "Sit down and play it. You'll enjoy it." I was not interested in Origins one bit until I played it at home. I played Have the you demo. No, I haven't yet. I'm, I've been looking out, though. I've been looking. I'm on the hunt for them, and as soon as I find one, I will shoot it with a dozen arrows. But uh, I'm, I'm loving the game, Snooze. I wasn't interested in it. How does it, how does it compare compared to um, uh, well, even the last one? Well, I, I didn't really... Because there was, there was a few... Well, you've, you've played most of them, haven't you? Most of them, I haven't Most played. Of, yeah. I haven't really played, played very like, much. Black, Black Flag and yeah, yeah, yeah. You played Unity as well. Yeah, I did play you? Unity. Yep. It's yeah. it's, it's only the, um, the last one, uh, Syndicate, that I didn't have much time with. Yeah. Well, in re- in regards to like take all the faults that Unity had, and just focus on how it was controlled. How does how does that differ? Because that was one thing that we've um, we've seen it on that they completely changed the way that you actually play the game yeah well look so, um assassin's creed in the past with like the climbing and the controls and all that you've you've had to specifically look for a lot of uh hand grips and all that there's a lot of areas i'm only in the first area of origins i've not put a ton of time into it um so i'm only in the, the starting area but what i've noticed and 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 rem pointed out for me as well is that if something looks like it's climbable, whether it has visible handholds or not, it, it, pre- it probably will be climbable. Like you see a rock face, you know, there's no, there's no like highlighted white edges or anything like that. But it's a rock face. People can rock climb. You probably could climb it, albeit you're not going to physically be able to climb it as fast as these crazy guys in the game. But it, yeah. it, it, they're climbable, right? And you walk up to it, you press A, and he starts climbing on the wall, even though there's no obvious footholds and stuff like that. And where he puts his foot and his hands looks re- like looks good, even though they're not. You know what I mean by like in, like in Assassin, uh, not Assassin's Creed, uh, Uncharted, where it's pretty bloody obvious where you need to yeah, put your hands. Well, yeah, it's there's always it's, a, a rule of how it looks. Yeah, yeah. There's there's no prevalent edges for you to grab, but it. It just looks right, though. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 the controls are really good. And it's as simple as going up to, if you want to climb up, you go up to the wall, press A, and you'll start climbing, and you just direct your way up using the thumbstick. Coming down, I, I haven't done that too many times, but I just find tapping B on the Xbox controller, and he'll drop from ledge to ledge and eventually descend all the way down. Mm-hmm. Um but I'm pretty happy with the controls. I've not been screwed over by the controls as yet. You know, the old, uh, no, don't jump there. It's dead. Yeah. <laughs> I've not had anything happen like that. So that, that's um, that's a good thing. Um, and the combat, although very different to what I'm ex- like used to with Assassin's Creed, I don't mind it so much. I'm still learning how... How to like? Because if you've got more than one, you 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 have a lock on. You you click the right stick, and you lock onto a character. But I'm finding it a little bit cumbersome if there's another enemy coming up, sort of to my side or behind me, to switch who I'm like going to hit if I press the attack button. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I'm just not used to it yet because I haven't put a lot of time into it. But the time that I have put into it, I'm enjoying. And there's cool like um. Uh, like, like little puzzles, riddles that you can pick up. You can pick up these um, little bits of paper that have got something written on it, and it'll say, "Come find me at the bottom of a bowl big enough for the for a god." And it, and 
Rachel was with me, my wife was with me, and she said, what is that like, the lake? And I'm like, oh, a lake is kind of like a bowl. Mm. And then I jumped in, I think it's Siwa, which is the name, I think it's Siwa, I don't know, I might be wrong, which is the name of the eagle that you can control, kind of like a drone. Mm. So I jumped in that just to survey the area, thinking, all right, let's go and have a look. And then I saw like a massive well, which was round and kind of looked like a bowl. And I'm like, ah, no, that's it. That's where I'm going. And it was probably 300 meters away from where I was. And there's no, you know, a lot of the times it's like, go and find this. And these games will give you like a, a circle on the map and it's somewhere inside the circle. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, nothing like that. It gives you that one line which is a clue as to where it is, go find it. So it was a cool little treasure hunt. And yeah, I went into that well, yeah, swum awesome, to the bottom yeah. of it, found it, and what it was was a pretty beefy new melee weapon. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's good. I, I'm enjoying it. It's still very early days. I haven't played very much of the campaign at all. Um, I think Origins is going to be a chill-out game for me where I'm just going to go and do shit on the map and uh, and have mm. a bit of fun with it. Switch so off. it's going good. Yeah. On the Xbox One X, 4K, 30 frames a second. I'm happy with it. It doesn't have a setting to change it to 60 and 1080, but I'm not. I'm not really bothered by it. I'm really enjoying the 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 4K ness. So mm. it's a good thing. Uh, a, a lot of people have asked me something. I'll just mention about the Xbox One X. Does it have a different user interface? Everything is exactly the same on the Xbox One X. There is nothing different, except for when you press the power button and it boots up, it gives you a little bit of a... Like, it shows you a little video of the the CPU, the Xbox One X CPU, and then it goes into the Xbox logo. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, no, everything else is exactly the same. It even has the lag in the the user (laughs) interface as well. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. The experience outside of a game, no different to the One or the One S. Mm. you have any questions no. um not really um i'm i'm surprised to hear you say that you're the uh, the 4k 30 i do you cut out a bit there what'd you say i'm surprised to hear that you say you're okay with the 4k 30 with the 4k 30 yeah look yeah. it's no nah, it doesn't bother me at all because it's because it's stable, I'm not getting um, frame drops. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I probably tried 1080 and 60, had it have the option, I may struggle going back to the 4K. But because the option's yeah. not there, I'm not, I'm not dissatisfied saying, oh, I don't want to play it. it. If the option was there, I probably would end up switching it to go for the 60 frames. Yeah. But still very happy with the fact that it's not there anyway. Have you have you played Wolf yet with the um, with the upgraded yeah. patch? Yes, I have. Uh, How did that look compared to it the S? Looked amazing. You can definitely tell that the the resolution is increased because mm-hmm. I I had a look. There was a particular scene the the, the scene with Frau Frau Engel uh, where at the beginning of the game where she's taunting. Uh, the injured BJ Blaskowitz and saying that he's a loser because he's injured and can't work and walk and all that sort of stuff. Uh, her hair was basically just a a blurry mess, whereas mm-hmm. now on the Xbox One X, it's very clear that there are strands of hair, so it's a, it's a lot a lot clearer. The image is great. The frame it doesn't feel as buttery smooth as when it was on the Xbox One S, but it's still okay. very good. It, it it's it feels like the frame rate is down a little on the S, but for the sake of it looking probably twenty times better. Twenty, yeah. Mm. So it does it does play very good. Yeah. I'm very happy with it. Uh, for a game that uh, is not optimized, I tried The Evil Within, the first one. Yep. Still plays clunky as shit. Didn't appear to do <laughs> anything for that game. So it's obvious that if any older games are going to play better. They have to be patched. Otherwise, it's it, there's going to be no in, no increase in performance whatsoever. It's just weird. Yeah, that is a bit strange. 
Mm. It's obviously it's not ex- utilising the power that's there. Yeah, that I, that's what I reckon yeah. it is because mm. the game probably doesn't recognise the the the, 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 the rest of the blocks. power. Yeah, that's right. It's probably just programmed <laughs> to use this amount and doesn't know the rest of it's there, so it doesn't perform any better unless it's patched. But yeah. Uh, have, haven't tried the evil within two yet. So maybe next no, week. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Yeah, well, that's it for me for questions, mate. No worries. Well, do you want to tell us what you've okay. got? Um, yeah. Why not? Okay. So, uh, um, <laughs> it would have been interesting week, if you said no. Nah, well, all right. Well, fuck it. Let's go into the no, news. Sort off. Let's go and do something else. Um, yeah. Lots more Destiny Two. Uh. Mm-hmm. Those servers are getting very, very quiet. Oh, okay. Um, very much, and and even more so to the point where, uh, not last night, but the night before. Excuse me, just readjust. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> what are streaming? you readjusting? Oh, I'm just sitting up. <laughs> Hang on, a bit too just, far to the left. Just sitting up in the chair. That's all. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sorry, keep yeah, going. Yeah, so the, a couple of nights ago I was streaming it and it uh, was was just going through and, you know, doing, doing the, the weekly challenges and whatnot. And um, the weekly challenge this week was to go and do a certain amount of public events on IO. Mm. And I'd get to the public event and there'd be no one there. Oh. There would be absolutely no one. What are you, what so are you, you on? Get, uh, this was on both. I tried it on both. Okay. So um, both I being PlayStation PS, and Xbox. Yeah, both PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah. So I would have thought the PlayStation, like the the Xbox, has always been quieter compared, like with the amount of people running around. Mm. But um, yeah, very quiet. So you you'd get halfway through the pub, the public event, and you know you, you're struggling because you're one person against everything. Yeah. And then other people would start to show up, which was which is always good. But um, yeah, nothing nothing like it's been before, where there was always you know five, eight people around. There's uh, just not that anymore. It just seems to be getting very very quiet. Mm, that's uh, a shame. And even the the crucible starting to get a, a bit um, a bit of a long wait time on it. Either that, or more people are just playing in four person fire team. Right. Getting the the singles to to match up just takes that little bit longer, but yeah, it's um it's like it's still fun. I'm still enjoying it. I'm still building. I've um got three characters on the PlayStation now. I've got my uh my main char- my one character on the Xbox, and yeah, still just plugging away. It's 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 become very much my switch off game, which is what Division always was. So put it in, you know, you know what you got to do, so just go and. Do- and um, I'm actually starting to get quite good at Crucible. So more often than not, I'm either first or second in the, which is pretty cool. Nice. And, All right, uh, hang, on, yeah. hang on a sec, uh, Snoogs. Let's um, let's jump out and back in again. Yeah, it's starting to cut yeah. out a bit. All right. Well, um. That's a that's a shame for for Destiny, but uh, what else? What else have you been playing, man? What else? Uh, last night I started the Frozen Wilds. Oh yes, very good. Oh my god, is that beautiful? But oh, yeah, pretty game. Problem. What? One problem straight off the bat. I don't know why. Oh, I yeah. don't know how. My save file's gone. Yeah, you know what the issue was probably there <clears throat> with your previous PlayStation Four. You didn't have your account as primary, did you? No. They don't automatically so, upload unless it's primary. Yeah, but I thought I didn't think I'd changed it over while I was still playing, but I must have. And yeah, so my level fifty character with all the really cool shit and the way I had it all set up, gone. But that's all right because there's a boost yeah yeah that's right you can do the boost one that'll get you ready for the yeah, dlc level, level 45 yeah um yeah so it's uh so yes yeah, so i've i started wherever i started and it sort of says you know there's snow starting to come in and and made the trek 
north up into the frozen wilds and wow those new machines don't they pack a punch they do they're good and, and it just it it just felt fantastic actually you know being that i'd gotten to a point where i could pretty much walk through anything um getting you know knocked down a peg or two <laughs> it actually felt really good and really satisfying to to beat the um uh the the was it the flame claw i think they're called mm. yeah there's a flame claw and a freeze claw um but yeah that was uh it was actually really really quite satisfying to get through them so that was pretty cool uh i streamed that last night as well um going into the game itself i very much see what you mean that it's it's not really um introducing anything new yeah it does it, doesn't it does. like i think the only thing that i could really say was new was that uh that floor puzzle where you had to turn to to redirect the power the lights yeah yeah Odd, i don't yeah. remember that in the main game so i think that no, was all that was they really a, added that was just yeah, a new puzzle type really but um yeah yeah as soon as, as soon as i got back into it you know i because i had to reset it all up i i went and did my invert the look button and as soon as i we did know. that everything come flooding back <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah straight back into it uh so so yeah i got um i got through a, a fair whack of the story last night I, I played about three hours of it which was was pretty cool mm-hmm. and um yeah i think i'll be going back in tonight for a little while maybe so yeah happens. But yeah, what, what the thing that I noticed most, which I did sort of mention in the review that I did for Frozen Wilds, which is available on YouTube, uh, <clears throat> the Aussie Gamers Express channel, is that I felt like I was playing a real shortened version of the main game, where you start off, you meet a tribe, there's something going on, they put you through some tests, so you've got to go do the trials mm-hmm. and all that sort of stuff. You end up uh, challenging the leader of a, a group who you then... Uh, compete with in like a foot race which i remember doing in the main game uh inevitably you know obviously spoiler alert but it's pretty bloody obvious that you're going to win uh Mm -hmm. because you are this uh super duper greatest uh vitamin d deficient person uh you you win everything and uh yeah and, and you end up going and doing a cauldron which i specifically remember doing several times in the main game so yep. it's yep. it's a lot of the same but it, um, at the same time i want to convince mm. people as well or well, not convince people but i want to express to people that like that wasn't a bad thing i mean yeah well that's it, that's that's where i was going with it it felt the same it felt familiar uh, it didn't really introduce anything, but at the end of the day, it didn't need to. Yeah, it, it's, it, it was know, still the, good. Yeah, Zero Dawn is, you know, it's just it's one of those games that come out that we were we were all pumped for, and I platinumed it, so that just shows you how much time I put into it, and it's just it's more of you know a, a brilliant game and a brilliant story. Hmm. so it's um yeah it's well worth the go and make sure you just check out the the review which is pretty cool yes please do go and have a look mm. there's something really cool you can do with snow not telling yes. you what but go and have a look at the video <laughs> give it that's a like right, thumbs, up and, thumbs uh, up and subscribe hey listen anyone that's listening i don't if you don't even care about youtube and don't care about our reviews can you just go and put a thumb on it just go and press that thumbs up please yeah. please and thank Thanks. you Anyone? Please We've got a whole Get bunch of Spotify listeners. Go over there, mm. check it out. Come on, come and join us on Facebook as well, well Aussie Games Express. Something else to check out over on uh, YouTube. Uh, our review for Super Lucky's Tale has gone up. It has gone up. Yes, absolutely. Um, I so last week we um, we spoke about it, and, and you've had a few chuckles about it since then. That I did rage. At one yeah. point, um, I, I I don't deny it. I'm terrible at platformers. I always have been, even when platformers were pretty much all you could play. Mm-hmm. I've I've just always been terrible with them. I'm, it's just just how it is. So for me to be able to say that Super Lucky's has got me to a point now where I've gotten used to the controls, I've gotten used to the style. There's been a few nights where I've been sitting there going, 
I'll just do one more puzzle. Uh, I'll just do one more world. Hmm. You know, I'll just, just, just push it just for a little bit longer. And I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah, I'm it enjoying it so, too. I'm playing it as well. It is, it's just, there's nothing evil about it. There's nothing, um, like there's, there's, there's no real anxiety. There's, there's no, you know, get your heart racing. It's just good, simple, and honest fun. Yeah, you know, and it's fun that you can play. It doesn't matter if you're sitting by yourself or you've got the kids running around. You know, it's, it's um, it's Super Mario Brothers for the Xbox. Pretty much. Hmm. Yeah. It's that that kind of audience, I think. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And uh, yes, I've I've been having an absolute ball with it. I really enjoy the 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 chess puzzle like the chess type puzzles where you yep. go and you're um you're building the the pieces around to try and lock. Oh yep. Mm. Uh so yeah so that's been a bit of fun. And um yeah the reviews up good to go seems to be getting quite a few views so go and have a look everyone. A yeah. Um and what else? I'm just thinking I've got I've got one more that's that's a decent one that I've been putting some time into. But I don't think there's anything other than that. What is it? Ah, oh, the uh, 2017 Vomit Simulator of the Year. What? I have, uh, yeah, let's see, look, there's a bit of intrigue for everyone. Um, a lot of hours has been had. Every time I've played this, I've gotten up, felt a bit dizzy, and, you know, wiped the sweat off the brow before going and doing something else. Uh, I've been playing Rigs. Oh, yeah, right. In VR. And I've been playing a lot of Rigs in VR. Yeah, yeah we, should, we should team up and have a game of that. Come on, oh, I wonder if we can verse each other. I know we can join each other to play others or play mm. bots, which uh, which would be pretty cool. And um, I dare say you'd be able to set up a local match, surely. Yeah, we should um, do that. Yeah, oh, we have an absolute ball. And, you know, you go through and you, you do the initial setup and uh, work through and it takes you off into the, the first round in, out into the arena and you do the thing where, okay, this is what happens when you get blown up. You know, you get shot up into the air. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to turn off the blackout screen to see how it looks. Yeah. And you get you shot up and you get that instant vertigo and it's, oh, this is brilliant. Yep. Leave, that, leave it open. I want to see everything. Yeah, I hate the blinders. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, leave them off. Let me let me get that stomach churning. <gasps> so, yeah, yeah it's, it's um, tough. It's charm. I know, and it's I, I'm still very new with only having like like having my own VR sort of sitting next to me to play with. So it it takes it out of me very quickly. But um, yeah, every night this week I've been in it, and you know I'll do two or three uh, games, get off. You know, your head's sweating. You, you feel like you've got a bit of a shakes going on. <laughs> and I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. It's great fun. Yeah, hey, good. And that was the, one of the free games this month, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's been free for, I think, two months now. Uh, so if you Oh, was got... it? Is it? Yeah, it was free last month. Um, I think it's still free this month. Oh, that's right. It's it's uh, the Rush of Blood that's this month, the VR. Yeah, I, yeah I think it was a... um. It was a special for the, you know, because it was a release title, so mm. I had it free for a little while over the over the, the twelve month anniversary. Yeah, nice. But, uh, yeah, loads of fun. But that's um, I think that's it, mate. That's that's pretty much all from me. All right, another, no another shout out to the um the relentless guys though, because without them, I wouldn't be at the top of the leaderboards. So, oh right, the, yeah, the controller, relentless controller that you're using. Good on you. Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, well, that's uh, that's it for video game discussion. Let's go into some news. All right, Snoogs, uh, you got the news for us this week. Take it away, my friend. Which one do we have first? Sony moves up production. Sony moves up production. Okay, so there's a big issue when um, the VR actually first released and that was the availability of the Move controllers. Right. So it's been reported today that Sony is ramping up production of the PlayStation Move. Um, 
the PlayStation Move was originally released in 2010 as part of the motion control range. Yep. Uh, the controllers, you know, they've got nunchuck lock sticks, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Sony would have liked, and they stopped pursuing the initiative soon after, but with the PlayStation VR, Move controllers have come back into prominence as your primary control method. So there's there's been a bit of a shortage. Um there was a lot of price gouging when it first went live because they had a shortage of them. And now they're ramping up production of the move controllers to get them into more people's hands. Now, I have a theory for this. Right. I, I think we're going to see a bit of an explosion on games that actually require them. Well, if the if the trends are going towards that, then then that that probably will happen. I'm, I'm happy that I'm happy for that. I really do enjoy using them with, with a mm-hmm. like a handheld gun or something like that. I I actually really like the move controls. Yeah, well, I've um, I used them back when it was you know the the PlayStation Move, and they had those um, stupid little adventure games and sports games and whatnot on the PS3. Mm. Uh, I haven't really used them very much with the VR, but um, yeah, I'll get some soon. Mm. Yeah, fingers awesome. crossed. Yeah, good stuff. Mm. All right. Uh, next up in the news, EA respawns four hundred and fifty-five million dollars. What's that about? Yes, uh, EA has announced it will buy Titanfall developer Respawn Entertainment. Right. Mm. So, um, oh, what's that going to mean for them? More exclusives yeah. from them. Titanfall 3, exclusive to the Xbox One. <laughs> well, it's mm. EA, not Xbox, so who knows? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, well, of course. I don't know why I'm thinking yeah, yeah. that. Uh, the agreement sees EA pay $150 million in cash for Respawn, up to $164 million in long-term equity, and a maximum of $140 million in performance milestone payments. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, during the acquisition exa- announcement, EA has confirmed that Respawn currently has three games in development, a new entry in the Titanfall franchise, a new Star Wars game, and a VR gaming experience. Hmm. The, oh, well. uh, the, the VR game is apparently this uh, big super secret that they've got going on at the moment. Well, there's one thing we can be assured. Uh, the, uh, the Titanfall games have all had... Uh, I think they've all given away the, the DLC for free, haven't they? Hmm. Yeah, that won't happen anymore. Probably not so much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. So, right. uh, Respawn CEO Vince Zampella said of the acquisition, we started Respawn with the goal to create a studio with some of the best talent in the industry and to be a top developer of innovative games. We felt that now was the time to join an industry leader that brings the resources and support we need for long-term success while still keeping our culture and creative freedom. This is a great next step for Respawn, EA and our players. So good mm. on. Yeah, good stuff. All right. We'll yeah. watch this space and see if there's anything interesting worth reporting on in the future. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, third bit of news, Snoogs. Go, Harry, go. What's that about? Yes. This one, it's uh, a few months ago, there was some rumors around that um, the creative team behind Pokemon Go was actually working on a Harry Potter-style version of the game. Oh, I remember so, hearing that a while ago. Yeah, so it's now been officially announced that Harry Potter Wizards Unite uh, is going to be an augmented reality smartphone game launching in 2018. Mm. Players will learn spells, explore their real-world neighbourhoods and cities to discover and fight legendary beasts and team up with others to take down powerful enemies. Right. Are you a, po- so, a Harry Potter fan? I am. Oh really? I'm I'm very much a Harry Potter fan. You could uh, so cosplay Hagrid. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't even need all that much padding in the gut. <laughs> just, just a bit more hair. <laughs> yeah, just a just just a bit furrier. Uh yeah, so it's it's looking pretty cool. Um the the game encourages you to step outside with your phone. It's it's very much along the lines of um, Pokemon Go, but in the world of Harry Potter. If, so, you're a, if you're a Harry Potter fan, can you tell me what the houses are called? Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, and is there a fourth one? Yep. 
Yeah. No, I've gone blank. I've got no idea. <laughs> yeah, a I don't. One, but... I don't know. If it wasn't so late, I'd call my daughter in here. She knows them. I'm not a Harry <laughs> Potter fan. I. If you could have said puff and stuff or whatever, I don't know. Like you could have mm. made up the fourth one. I wouldn't have known. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but apparently, this is the first game in a a new range to come out across multiple platforms that's going to be in the Harry Potter world. So they're going to actually tap into that um, that massive market that's there to, to bring people in. You know, people have been crying out for more Harry Potter, more things that are going on in the world. So this, this is one way that they're doing it. They have? I'll take your word for it. They have. They very much have. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So, they okay. spawned another trilogy of movies. Oh really? There's more coming. Yeah, not f- but uh, these are these are prequel to what happened at, with Harry Potter. Right. These are back when um uh see, I've gone blank now. Do they show like Harry Potter's like dad beating the piss out of his mum? No. <laughs> was it was wasn't he from like a broken home where they like a, there was domestic no, violence no. and bashing? No. No, no. What am I his thinking parents, of? His parents were killed in front of him. Oh, so he was Batman. <laughs> Very much so, Batman with the scar. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Poor little fella. <laughs> hmm. All right, uh, yeah. is that it for that one? That's it for that one, mate. All right, we've got a sneaky fourth one in here, uh, Snooze. Tell us about the Xbox Gets Buggy. Hmm. So uh, earlier this week, Xbox has released Insects an interactive experience designed to showcase the best of 4K, Ultra HD, high dynamic range, spatial audio, and enhanced visuals of the Xbox One X. And what audio? Sp- I don't know. It says spatial. S-P-A-T-I-A-L. Spatial? Is that uh, not spatial? I don't know. Spatial. Spa- whatever it is. <laughs> it's a stupid word, isn't it? It's it's audio, it's fancy spatial. audio, spatial, <laughs> spatial audio. Yeah, does that mean it's like, yeah, okay. I, I think that's just fancy for surround surround sound. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Be immersed in the audio greatness of insects. See, the the thing is, the the word insect insects has been destroyed by the other night when Greggio was over because now all I can think of is an amalgamation of the words. Uh, yeah, oh, what's the word? What's he done? <laughs> he ruined it for me. It's like, um, oh, like in in incest, like it's like incest with yeah. the word incest with sex, insects. <laughs> I don't know. It was oh, it was a weird thing, and then every time I hear the word insects pluraled, it just sounds funny. Like it sounds like he's saying the word sex. <laughs> so uh, it's like uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's just that's all I all I hear now when I hear that word. Mm. But yeah, the, the the we were looking for that the other day on the store and we couldn't find it. So I don't know if it's there now, but it wasn't there on Wednesday night. We couldn't find. Yeah, it. I got this. I got this information, um, and I've held it back for tonight because I haven't put it up yet. But uh, yeah, I got it yesterday afternoon, so probably went live yesterday. Yeah, it might have. Yeah, well, we knew about yeah. it before it was released. I guess that was the issue. Couldn't get it. So it's a um, a demo that showcases native 4K HDR and wide mm. color gamut output. Yep. Your um, spatial video or spatial audio via headphones or home theater. Yep. 4K super sampling on all non 4K displays. Uh, dynamic lighting and time of day controls. High resolution textures and character models. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really much interested. Shows off. Yeah, it sounds mm. cool. I, I want to have a look at it. I want to check it out, but I'll have a look after th- after the show. Talk yeah. about it uh, next week. Nice stuff. All right, well, uh, that's it for this week's video game news. Uh, Snooks, let's go into user-created content. <laughs> yeah, no, no need for that. I'll insert the sound effects later. <laughs> Although, if we ever have any technical issues, I'll I'll give you a call. 
<laughs> yeah, just let us know and I'll I'll step up. <clears throat> All right, Sneaks, you're taking the reins on this one too. Get into it. User created content. I hope a few people liked the uh, the injection of of pinkness into that. Yeah, so a um, subliminal advertising for a separate post. A little bit of, little bit of advertising there. So uh, this week's one was around what? Uh, sorry, what is your go to game when you want to check out for a little while? So a lot of us use gaming for our downtime, wind down after a bad day, bad week, everything like that. So. What's your go-to? Do you have a go-to, mate? Yeah, I've got a... I've where you, got, where uh, you want to check out and be someone else? Well, well no, the thing is, I, I, the game I play to, to be someone else, I'm often 500 someone else's because it's Trials Fusion is what I play to just zone out and uh, and just relax. And believe it or not, if I, <laughs> I can actually relax while I'm playing that game. It can be very stressful at times, but only if you're, you're being competitive with it. But uh, mm. it, it's I, I can go to it and play something that I've never played before because it has community created. It has user created content, just like this segment. How good is that for a little bit of a, uh, a segue or a plug? But uh, it, it's got all the tracks that are made by the users. So I can mm-hmm. just go in there and just hit up a random track and be something I've never played before, just sit back, relax, play it, turn on Spotify, listen to some tunes and just just play it and i don't care how long it takes me to get through the level i don't care if i can't get through the level i'll just quit out and try something else and i just yeah zone out to that that's that's my go-to game very cool Hmm. well mine for a while there was uh the division really yeah it was Um, you. yeah and same sort of thing mate turn it on just running the um Running the laps that I that I'd made up and and were focusing on and just going round and round doing that usually with you know music playing in the background and and not really worrying about anything so it was always a good a good zone out hmm. which was good but yeah we've had a few people um, jump in and, and leave us a bit of bit of information so first off shout out to George Schneider, Fazza Manor and James Pearson for for chucking a like on the post and. Uh, yeah, we've got a few people that have actually left us comments as well, which is always pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, Sarah Michelle, Heroes of the Storm or Destiny 2 on PC? But Heroes of the Storm is my go-to. You ever wow. played Heroes of the Storm? Yeah. I call it Heroes yeah. of the Shitstorm. It's basically no League, of, League of Legends. It's just as toxic. If you know good. Okay. If you know good, people yeah, will... Yeah. They'll fucking tell you, <laughs> and they'll, they'll they'll tell you to take your own life. Yep. Uh, it's yeah, and I'm no good because I I don't spend enough time playing them, so I I, I get absolutely hammered. Um, That's why I got no idea what it is because I would have seen that once and just stepped around it. Well, it's just it's League of Legends with Blizzard characters, basically. Oh, okay. Fair yeah, hmm. a good good no game worries. if you if you're good at those kind of. If you're uh, good at them, yeah. What do you call them? MOBAs, if you're good at those MOBAs. But I'm not very good at them because I don't play them. And, yeah, you're just going to get treated like shit on them. I don't know why it's they default that chat shit to on. That should be automatically disabled unless you want it on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good stuff. Well, uh, Paul David Clement. Lately I've, lately, I've gone back into Fable 2 to switch off and lose myself into the world and try and get the threesome achievement. No luck as yet. <laughs> Who says games don't imitate life? <laughs> yeah, with, with the no luck part. See, it, <laughs> yeah. I would dare well, say yeah. that... You're getting the threesome. You've got to get the try for it. Well, if there's going to be one place that any of us are going to be able to do it, it should be in Fable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very unlikely in real life. But I'd say that... Uh, I've forgotten about that in Fable. Oh, right. I've, I've not played yeah. it. But uh, Paul, I would imagine Paul's playing that on Xbox Back Compat, which is one of the good things about it. If you do want to go back to one of those old games and give yeah, it a crack, actually, you can do actually, that. Um, Fable 2 is on the Gamer Pass. Oh, there you go. Nice and easy. Hmm. Good on you, Clano. Get into it, mate. Hopefully you get that, that achievement very soon. Yeah. Uh, James Pearson, another one of our, our regulars. Recently, I picked up Mudrunner's 4x4 game. For something you have to throw a bit of thought behind, it is completely relaxing and soothing. A great way to unwind over night time. 
Now, yeah. James, I agree with James. Have you played one of these games? It's a spin tires game. No, I haven't actually. No, I've got it on PC. Not not Mud mm. Runners because Mud Runners is the new version, but I've got spin tires on PC and. For for me, it's the I I actually don't know how to play the game. I, there's there's ob- objectives and things to do, but I've never actually put any time into doing the objectives. I literally just drive the trucks through rivers, through mud, and I just in, like it is the, one of the most visually impressive games for mud, like sort of physics. It's so satisfying. To take you and you, you drive around in these trucks. You might have a six wheel drive truck, but you can flip it into two wheel drive. But then when mm. you get to some sort of you know steep terrain, you can change it into four wheel, six wheel drive, and go through up these hills. And you see the the tires flexing, the walls of the tires flex, the mud kicks up and spreads apart, leaving gouges. There's winches you can use it. I'm really tempted to pick it up on PS4 or Xbox. Uh, it is such a great game. And now it's got co-op yeah, as well. So Ooh, for, for, yeah. for four-wheel drive enthusiasts, th- th- this is a really good game because you can work together to cross rivers and stuff like that. And if one of you gets stuck, you can go and change your vehicle out and come and try and rescue your your stuck friend. You know, whether you use a winch to pull them out or you go and get a crane to help them out. It's stuff like that. It, and it looks so great with all the, the realistic physics of the uh, the tread, tire treads. Because you see all the treads. They're, they're so mm. incredibly detailed. Uh, and the mud detail of how it caused pits. and oh, it's, it's, it's great. What's the trailer? Go and check a trailer out on YouTube and you'll see what I'm talking about. So a, a 4x4 enthusiast would lose their mind over this game. That's my opinion anyway. Cool. I'm going to have to have a look. All right. Uh, Ross Mark. For me, the game I jumped into to relax, unwind, and just forget about everything has been Destiny and now Destiny 2. It was never about doing the hard stuff, just jump in and shoot aliens, run around and enjoy myself. I I can completely understand that. Mm. Yeah. I One of, one of my characters... Um, Actually, the, the character on the Xbox. So I got to a point where I was level nine. I was still just plugging away through the story. One night, I just did laps of the church uh, on, on oh, Earth. Yeah. Yep. yeah, just did laps of the church all night and went from level nine to level 20 in about two and a half hours. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just doing laps of the church. I was picking up um, a lot of good loot. Because you've got certain areas, I think you have four bosses that that spawn there, and um, or four high value targets, whatever you call them. And yeah, it's it was just real, just relaxing. Just didn't really think much of it. Round and round in circles, having a bit of fun. <laughs> so yeah, I'm nice. with you, Ross. I'll come. I'll come and join you for that. I'm one one night, mate. Uh, on to George Schneider, Battlefront. Hmm. <laughs> I, I don't think either of us agree with that one. <laughs> mm, no, nah, well, I suppose once you've once you've played it enough and you you know it, you'd uh, you'd enjoy just the the switch off. I suppose it's like anything, if like any, anyone looking at the at the division two, you know, it's um it's a competitive shooter, and you know how can you do that without getting competitive? But if you know the maps, and you just want to turn off and pull the trigger, then yeah, I could probably probably understand that. Mm. Yeah, look, Battlefront's are a good game. Uh, it's just, mm. for me, I don't know, I have my time with it. I, I enjoyed the, like, the wave defense mode the most. Graphics yeah. in it were yeah. amazing. Sound effects were mm. bloody, bloody realistic when it comes to Star Wars. So good. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Wayne Gainsayer. Either Fallout Four or Goof Troop. Goof Troop. Now, Fallout, yeah, Fallout Four, I can completely understand because you can absolutely just get lost in the in the wasteland. But what the heck is Goof Troop? I'm typing it in now. Goof Troop on the SNES. Ah, uh, so I guess it's a platformer. 
Uh, no, it's not. It looks like a, a top-down RPG, like um, like the old Zelda games. Ah. Oh, yeah, I can see why you could tune out to that. Sort of just chill out, go and do your thing. Uh, actually, Sweet. let's uh, let's have a look. What does it say here? Goofy and Max cope with life in the suburbs. Let's say what kind of game it is. No, it doesn't say. It sort of just says that from Google. Have a look here from IMDb. The classic Disney character Goofy is a single father raising son Max in Spoonerville. Pete, a frequent antagonist from the old cartoons, lives next door with his family. Uh, no, that's a TV show. I was about to say that sounds very familiar like a TV show or movie that I've well, seen. Well, the game, I, I would imagine the game's probably based on the TV show, mm. but uh, yeah, that's. Oh, okay. That synopsis there is for the show. <laughs> uh, there you go. I don't know. Um, Goof Troop game. There we go. That might help us out a little bit. Goof Troop is an action adventure video game developed and released by Capcom in 1993 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and based on the television series of the same name. There you go. Hmm. So action adventure, which I would imagine is like Zelda. Nice. Okay. That's cool. Learn something uh, every day. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks for uh, that one. Was that that was Wayne? Was it? Yeah, Wayne Gaines. That was Wayne, yeah. What are you playing that on? Are you 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 playing that on a SNES? Maybe the mini SNES you got, or are you using an emulator on PC or something? Let us know. Um, yeah, put it on the pinned post cool. for for this episode if you if you mm. if you don't mind. So that's um that's it, mate. That's everyone. So that's thanks it. a lot, everyone, for for jumping in and having a say. And yeah, see you yeah. at the next one. Thanks, everyone, for user-created content. We always appreciate everybody that either mm. likes or comments on that post that helps us out with content yep. for the show. Mm. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the next segment, uh, The Golden Child, which is What's That Sound? <music> All right. So let's start off with last week's What's That Sound, which uh, I'm pretty sure uh, stumped both of us. I think Rem gave that yeah, to us. Is I that right? Got it. Yeah, she did. Uh, I reckon she w- was laughing when she found out that I didn't pick it up. Oh, I I'm should pretty- have known that one. Oh, I should have known that one too. All right, let's have a listen to it. Mm. So we're all supposed to be blind then, right? Not just me. All right, fantastic. See, look, although it was from a pretty... Have... Oh, sorry. What? We should have picked up on the sarcasm, really. Well, it's a it's an obscure line, and it's yeah. oh, it has been it some time since sound, I played it. It even says like like it was a Gladys. It even says it like she does. But it's not Gladys. I know it's not her, but it's the the said, synthes- said in, synthesized sort of thing. Yeah, but even the 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 sarcastic dripping or the sarcasm dripping off it. It's yeah. very much very much like the sort of stuff that she says. Like it's said in the same way. But yeah, that was the. Um, hmm. The broken turret, the little minigun turret from Portal 2. Uh, and Martin Kremers was crafty enough to pick that one. Well done, man. You got your free game. Enjoy. All right. Now, this week, we don't have a What's That Sound from anybody else, so I've got What's That Sound this week. But what, while we're on the topic of the actual sound itself, is uh, I've opened up the forum to anybody who listens to the show or anyone that uh, is a part of our Facebook page, or, you, or uh, Twitter community, or YouTube, whatever. If you're listening to this and you want to provide a sound for us to guess, then f- send across an MP3 pl- uh, file of a video game sound, 10 seconds or less, uh, to WTS at AussieGamersExpress.com. And uh, if we do choose your sound and use it on the show, you'll get yourself a free game. So for, for your efforts, a little bit of a thank you there. So uh, keep that in mind. We'd, we'd like to get some sounds from our listeners. And uh, if it's cryptic and we can't get it, be ready to uh, send us through the answer after the show's recorded. Otherwise, we'll just probably never know. All right. So, uh, Snoogs, you ready for this week's What's That Sound? It's from me, so I can't guess. Ready? Mummy. Yep. No, this... <laughs> It's, it's, I think this is easy. We're going to have a few winners here. I, I'm, not, I'm not as crazy and outlandish as Reprimir. So have a listen. <laughs> what was that noise? Huh? Whose footprints are these? Huh? You know that one? Mm. Can you play it again? It's thrown off. 
Oh, I can play it again. Huh? What was that noise? Huh? Whose footprints are these? Huh? Is it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I thought you were and you were going to you were going to be in a lot of trouble if you didn't get it. Yeah. Well, I haven't played that in a long time though. <laughs> it has. It has been a long time. But yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you got that one. <laughs> All right. Well, for everybody else, that's been bleeped out. Uh, if you think you know what this week's What's That Sound is, then send us a private message to our Facebook page. And if you are correct, we will send you a free game. So there you go. That was Well, that was quick. You got it really quickly. We'll play it one more time for those playing along at home. Huh? What was that noise? Huh? Whose footprints are these? Huh? All right, well, that was What's That Sound. Let's move on to Last Words. Sneaks, you got any last words? Not that I'm not going to kill you. Um, it's just the end of the show, man. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, a couple of little things, I think. Okay. Um, so Doom is now available in Australia and New Zealand for the Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. So that's um that's one thing to have a look for. So Sonic Forces. Sonic was, Forces is now. Yeah, yes. we were supposed to get a uh, access to that for a review, but I've not heard anything as yet. Mm. Hmm. Uh, and um, also something else that we've been following along on the page, uh, Wild West Online, is launching into early access. Uh, more alpha, it's still an alpha build, but it's launching on the fifteenth of November. Okay, yeah, which, not too, will, which would be not, pretty cool. Not too far away. Uh, mm. Also, we've got um, UFC three has been revealed. Yeah, it's it's got Conor McGregor on the front co- cover again, so he's probably going to get beaten in his next match. <laughs> With the um, the EA cover curse. The Remember curse. that? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Everyone everyone knows about that now, especially after. Ronda got absolutely flogged. Yeah, Ronda Rousey got hammered too. Did you hear about mm. what happened after that that loss? No. Ronda Rousey actually, and I'm not saying this lightly to make fun or anything like that, she actually went into a massive downward spiral of depression and almost oh, took I her did. life. Yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, she ended up checking herself in somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And that That's, wow. I'm glad she got help because that would be very, very sad. If yeah. um, oh. that that kind of uh, status gets you to the point where you're so disappointed in yourself that you feel like a massive failure and want to kill yourself, because she's fantastic. You know, winning mm. or losing losing a fight here and there doesn't mean you're a failure, and that obviously translates to everything that we do in life. Losing here yeah. and there, or taking a, a while to get where you want to be, it doesn't mean anything. It just means you've got to keep on trying. You got to want mm. it more. Yeah, that, did that you was sad. did you actually see um, Ronda Rousey? I think it was just last week. She uh, was playing. Um, I did. Yeah, she yes. was, she was playing on the the Xbox One X, uh, oh. Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I I heard about it and saw a quick snippet. I didn't see all of it. Yeah, I saw a bit of it. They were um, well, they were having a ball, mate. That's, uh, they seemed to whoever was um whoever was doing it with her was having an absolute blast. I think so. They were a little bit starstruck as well, which is which is always cool to see with someone. Yeah, nice. Hmm. But um, uh, yeah, the other any other stuff I got for last words, mate. Make sure everyone gets over and checks out our YouTube channel. Checks out uh, what's the uh, what, what have we got up this week? So we've got on YouTube. Yeah, uh, I'll get that for you in half a second. Um... Well, I'm I'm working on a uh, a Destiny video at the moment. A bit of a, a bit of a fun one with some of my exploits on there. So that that'll be up what about, when I'm done. What about this? Um, the 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 monetization issue with YouTube. Your Super Lucky's Tale review was flagged as not suitable for most advertisers. Yeah, I know. I I, I click the request review and it's been fixed. Mm-hmm. But what kind of algorithm have they've got where the words Super Lucky's Tale review a fun platformer for the whole family? And there's no swear words in the re- in the review. You don't say anything remotely uh, no. 
controversial because it's a family game, of course. Exactly. How the hell did that get flagged? Oh, some someone was saying the other day it got um, uh, their name got flagged. What? Because it lucky was to... oh your no, no, name? No, that, no, 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 their name. Uh, a person was saying anyway. In the I can't remember what their name was exactly, but in the middle it was T I T. Oh right. It was in oh, the yes, middle of their name, and that's what flagged it. Yeah, so there might be something in there that together might look a bit sus, but no, I reckon they're just they're just backing out of a lot of stuff. It's so silly. Like, it, it's it, super might, lucky it might have tale. something to do because isn't our um our channel uh rated for mature audiences? Oh uh, no, I don't think there there's a thing for that. Like you can do that to an individual video, but not the channel. Mm. Okay. But yeah, my Xbox One X, my initial experience wasn't good, was flagged as not suitable. Yeah, I don't understand it. Uh, I, like, I mean, other like than the fact that... I understand. Yeah, I understand South Park, You know, South Park, before it had even loaded, it had come up and told me that yeah, this was not suitable. Uh, which is reasonable. Really? I kind of know that. But yeah, my, um, my Xbox One X vlog video, other than sort of display the fact that I could probably talk underwater. Uh, I don't think there's anything untoward in that video. Nah, I think it's just that they're still getting used to it. Mm. But anyway, yeah, so my Xbox uh, One initial experience video is available. Super Lucky's Tales up there. There's some gameplay for the new Ashes game. The Horizon Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds review. Uh, We've also got uh, my nine-year-old verse versus dad video have you seen that yet uh i've seen well i've seen most of it i think i don't know where i finished it up yeah the one where i played against um, emily and i was a massive douche yeah and she started bringing out the fact that uh, you are her father (laughs) said that i was a bad dad no (laughs) she was what was it the the car that won who the hell is that yeah (laughs) Bloody, um, oh, I don't remember their names. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's most of the most up to date stuff on on YouTube. Go and check it out. Sub, like, everything. Do us do us a favor. Mm-hmm. We're good people. I think we're worth it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We're on Spotify now. So if you're listening to this on a device you don't want to be listening, or a program, or an app that you're not you're not happy with, go across and get it on Spotify. That's cool. That is so awesome. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, last week I was on the Xbox and Chill podcast with the Doug Boys. Go and check out them on YouTube. Go and search up Xbox and Chill and check out their latest episode, which I think was... I have no idea. Uh, and I'm on their latest episodes. Go and check it out. I think I made a little bit of a formal of myself, but whatever. I like to do that from time to time. That's uh, all you, I've you got, Snooks. Hey? Yeah, that's all from me, mate. I just said, you, you went all right on the show. Ah, lovely. It was all right. No uh, Last of Us quiz yet? No, not yet. You're never going to catch me off guard, dude. Just bring it. I'm going to catch you off guard. Don't you worry about no, that. No, you can't. It's not It's not possible. No, I'm, I'm telling you, I will. How? How are you going to do it? Give me a week. <laughs> How's that kind of catch me off guard if I know? <laughs> oh, with what you uh, actually do. Hmm. It's got to be reasonably fair, though. You can't just spring something on me and ask me what, what the first line of coding is in the files on the disk. I'm, I'm not going to ask you anything like that. Right. I don't well, know okay. what you're concocting. Here you go. Here you go. Here's, here's one question that I've oh. got for it. Oh. <laughs> because, yeah, so you, okay, you put yourself in it now. <laughs> Before, before The Last of Us was released, oh, okay. there, was a ma- this question. there was a massive controversy about the game. Do you know what that controversy was? Oh, before it was released, was there a before controversy? Before it was released. I, hadn't, I don't think they'd even finished making it yet. But the original direction that the game was going to go caused a massive controversy. Was that and about... Was, was that about... Uh, Tess uh, being the antagonist and uh, no. Ellie having to kill her? No. 
Oh, what did they change? They changed a, a, a very, very significant thing. Oh, are you talking about Ellie's appearance? No, 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 no. Oh. Huh. Well, then, Something that think... encompasses the game as a whole. No? No, I don't know. Okay. Before The Last of Us was finished production, hmm. they were doing early tests in, in and around the office. Oh, and... the cover. No, 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 not the cover. Oh. Originally, the virus only attacked women. Oh, this is something I didn't know. Yes. Originally, the virus only attacked women. That's how it came to be that Ellie was so important originally because she was a woman oh. and was not infected. But it then got to the point where, obviously, they're, you know that who, when, when they were creating it, it, this had never come across like this until someone actually brought it up, was that, hold on a second, you've got men going around beating the shit out of women. So that's, that's very, <laughs> se- obviously, it's very sexist. Where did you get very- this from? I I got it. I I found it on a um uh a naughty dog uh site that just had random facts on it. Oh, okay, that's really cool. I am happy to say I did not know that, and that's cool. Mm. I like. I'm glad this so, is yeah, going to bring some things to light. But there was a yeah, big massive controversy about it. But but in fairness, it's got nothing to do with the Last of Us. Well, it kind of does. Well, it's not in the final because game. Because it was still classified as The Last of Us before it got to that. Yeah, I've never played the unfinished game, <laughs> the the uh, the the altered one. I thought I thought you were one of these people that was the all encompassing world. No, the, You've the read game. The Last of Us grimoire cards. No, the game. The ga- well, that's the not. Game. That, oh. There's no. That's not in in the game. <laughs> no, but that that's but super awesome. Though. That is super, super awesome. That's- well, that's, Never that's heard, why I didn't make it into the, into the end product. Never heard of that before, though. So if mm. you're going to bring stuff like that, um, welcome it, because that's I didn't know that, and that's very interesting to know. I actually thought that was pretty cool. I also found out that um, The Last of Us was originally supposed to be a... Uh, did they do Jack and Daxter? Yeah, that, yeah that's Naughty Dog, yeah. yeah. Naughty Dog did Jack and Daxter, so... No, um, it originally started off, the original scope of works was for a Jack and Daxter reboot. Mm, I, I have heard that that before. And yeah. then they sort of got to a point where they went, you know what, you just do what you want. And they mm. made Last of Us. Mm. And didn't they yeah. what? Didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm still working on something. So I've got a few little things that I can ask you, but just, yeah, give us a week. Yeah. If, right. if, if what I'm working on doesn't come through by next week, I've got something planned for you. Okay, I'm interested. You're on. You're okay. on uh, the podcast officially saying that. So bring it. Bring it. All right, done. Keen as. All right, cool. Thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks, Noogs. That uh, that brings us to the end of the show. So we've got nothing else to offer for this week, but we'll be back again next week for the last few uh, podcasts for 2017. So for everyone that listened to this week's podcast, a little bit up to this point whatever thank you very much we love you and that's it until next week i am lucas and i am snoogs and once again thank you everybody for hanging around catch us next time bye bye well here we are once again at the end of this week's show if you're still hungry for more video game content head over to the aussie gamers express facebook page and give us a like We also have a heavy presence over on Twitter, so give at AussieGamers12 a follow. And also our YouTube channel is there waiting for you to give it the love that it deserves. This podcast is available for your convenience through iTunes, Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. Thanks again for listening and I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast.